In this video, we're going to talk about how to account for bonds issued at a premium. And in case you're wondering what is a premium or why would a bond ever be issued at a premium, uh, the basic reason is that in some cases, the stated rate of interest that's on a bond, so the amount that's going to be used to determine uh, the interest payments, let's say 9%, if that amount is greater than the prevailing market interest rate, the market rate at the time of issuance. So interest rates fluctuate commonly, right? Every single day interest rates are changing and basically when a firm sets out to actually issue a bond, there's a lot of paperwork involved. It takes time, right? You don't just decide to issue a bond and then issue it the next day. So you come up with a, a rate and you say, okay, right now we think the, the, the market rate is 9%. But over time, maybe it takes three months before you actually do that issuance. And by that time, the market rate has changed. And in this case, the market rate went down, right? It went from 9 to 7%. So what do you do? You say, okay, well, we're not going to just uh, issue these bonds at, at this, this rate when the market rate is 7. We're not going to give out a 9. So what you do is, is you sell the bonds at a premium. And Basically, what that means is that investors would be willing to pay more than the face value of the bonds. So let's say it's a $100 bond. Uh, maybe they give you $102 for a $100 bond. They're giving you a premium. They're giving you more than the face value, than the amount you'd have to pay back, uh, because your bonds are paying interest at a higher rate than what the market rate happens to be at that time. So how do we determine what the premium is right now we understand what why there'd be a premium why it'd be at 102 instead of 100 but why 102 why not 103 or 104 so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to calculate uh, the present value of the principal of the bond the face amount you know in this case like a hundred dollars that has to be paid back the present value of that and then the present value of the interest payments and then when we add those two together uh, that's actually going to give us the proceeds that we're going to get, the 102, the 103, what have you. That's going to give us the proceeds and the starting carrying value of this bond. Uh, but, but this is something that's a lot uh, easier to understand if I actually work through an example. Uh, so, so let's take an example and let, let's put some numbers to this and it'll, it'll all make sense. So let's say we issue three-year bonds. So by that I just mean the maturity date will be in three years. Three years from now we have to pay these back uh, with a face value of a million dollars. Okay, so that means three years from now we have to pay back, our firm has to pay back a million dollars, right? We're, we're raising capital now but we're gonna have to pay back a, a million dollars on these bonds when they mature. So the stated rate, stated rate of interest now this is the rate that is used to compute our annual interest payment. Okay, that stated rate is going to be 9%. And we're going to say, as I just mentioned, it's going to be an annual interest payment. Could have been semi-annual, but we'll just say annual interest payment. So once a year we're going to pay interest, and the interest is going to be 9% of our face value here, of our million dollars. right? And so that comes out to when we just take a million, multiply it by 9%, that's going to give us 90,000. Now, of course, if this was semi-annual, then we divide this by two and it'd be 45,000, and that would change things uh, significantly. So we got to make sure we understand, okay, this is a semi-annual or annual. In this case, it's, it's annual. So now we need to know, well, what's the market rate of interest when we go to do the actual issuance? So the market rate is 7%. So let's think about this intuitively for a minute. We're about to issue bonds, right? that are going to pay 9% interest, but the market rate is 7%. So we're paying 2% more interest than someone could go get elsewhere. So what does that mean? They're gonna have to pay us a premium, right? This is gonna be a premium situation, right? People pay us a premium for these bonds. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna take the present value and if you don't understand what present value is, I suggest you uh, you can go check out the time value of video, uh, time value of money, excuse me, videos that, that I made. Uh, but right now I'll just give you the, the formula. I'll just write this out. The present value of the principal, and I'm talking about this $1 million face value. We're taking that. It's a $1 million divided by 
one plus the interest rate one point and we're talking about the market rate of course the stated rate is only used to determine how much interest is paid but now when we're looking at present value we care about the market rate so that mar one plus the market rate and then we put it to the number of periods we got three periods because there's three years right now if it was semi-annual then we'd have six periods because it'd be three years but twice a year but we're just doing annual so this is what we've got and that's going to give us we calculate this out 816,298 so that's the present value today of that million dollar face value that that's going to have to be paid back in three years but now we have to say well what's the present value of the interest payments now this formula is going to be the formula for present value of an ordinary annuity I'm just going to, again, I'm just going to put it up here and assume that you know this. Uh, we're going to have here 1 point plus a, oh no, 7 to the third with 1 in the numerator. Here, that's a 1. And then in the denominator of all this, we're going to have the uh, market interest rate. Again, we're not using the stated rate here. And then, of course, this is all going to be multiplied by, so we've got to take the, the actual cash interest payment, right? So that's $90,000. We already calculated that. At basically, we're saying here, every year, we're making an interest payment of $90,000. Now, what is the present value of those interest payments? Three years, we're making payments of $90,000. What's the present value of those interest payments today? And so when we calculate this big, ugly equation out, uh, it's going to give us 236188 Now, when we go and add these together, let's see here, the present value of the principal, present value of the interest payments. So we, we sum these, and that's going to give us the amount of the proceeds that we're getting when we issue these bonds, the amount of cash that we're going to get. And the proceeds are going to be 1052486 Now, here's where you see the premium. Right, the proceeds. So we're 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 raising money with a bond issuance. We're getting a million fifty-two thousand four eighty-six, but we only have to pay back a million three years from now, right? So that's where the premium comes in. We just take this one million fifty-two thousand four eighty-six, deduct the million that we have to pay back, and so we say, okay, well we got a premium of fifty-two thousand four hundred eighty-six dollars on this bond issuance. Now we're going to have to amortize this premium over time th throughout the life of the bond and this is actually going to get quite complicated so it's best that we just put together a schedule and we can work everything out and it'll be a little bit easier uh, to understand but actually before I do let me just put the journal entry here so that you would you just makes things really clear for you of, of what's what's going on here so we're gonna have so this uh, the date of issuance we're gonna debit cash for one million fifty two thousand four eighty six right that's the proceeds from our bond issuance it's easy to figure out what's going on with cash right uh, but then we've got to credit a bond payable of a million now you see hey the debits and credits don't match up right well that's where this premium comes in we have a journal entry for the premium on bond payable that's fifty two thousand four eighty six so that's this is what we would record at issuance, right? We issue the bonds, not when we pr uh, pay the interest. That's just I issuance. Uh, so now we've got to set up the schedule to figure out what our interest payments are going to be. So we set up the schedule, and we're going to have to start the schedule out with the carrying value of the bonds, right? And I'll explain all these these other things here in a moment, but let's go with the carrying value. Well, we just calculated that. It's the the starting carrying value is the proceeds from the bond issuance. So I'm just going to take that and bring it down. So we'll have 1052486 is where we start with. Right? That's this carrying value. And on the date of issuance, which we're going to say January 1st here, date of issuance, we're not paying any cash. We're not paying any interest expense. We're not amortizing any premium because we haven't had an interest payment yet. The interest payment won't come to the end of the year. So now we go and say, all right, how do we calculate interest expense? And, and, and so we, how do we calculate interest expense to make our journal entries for January 1st, 2018? So what we do is we take the carrying value of the bonds and we multiply that 
by the market rate of interest, which if you remember was 7%. So multiply that by 0 0.07. Okay. Now that's going to give us $73,674. Now how much interest did we actually pay out? Well, if you remember, we calculated that already. It was 90000 90,000, and that was just the 9% stated interest times the 1 million face value, right? That gave us, that's how much cash we're actually paying when it's time to pay interest, but our interest expense is lower. And the reason for that is this, this bond premium. So the difference, the 90,000 minus 73,674 is going to give us our premium here, the amount of premium that's been amortized for this year. That's 16326 right? That's just the difference of these two numbers right here. Now, this premium that's been amortized for this period is now going to affect the carrying value of our bonds because we're going to deduct it from the carrying value. So we take the 1052486 and subtract out the premium that we just amortized, and that's going to give us 1036160 okay? Now, how will we make the journal entry for what just happened here? Well, let me just scroll down a, a little bit uh, so you can hopefully still see this, this top row. Uh, so now on January 1st, 2018, our entry would be interest expense. And we just pull it right out of the table, 73,674. Okay. And then we've got cash going out. We've got cash going out of 90,000, right? Remember, that's just the stated rate and the face value of the bond. That's the actual interest that we're paying out. And then now, of course, these don't these don't balance, right? So what do we do? Well, we've got the amortization of the premium. So we just add that in and we just take it right from the table. See, the table makes everything nice and nice and easy. 16,326 and now everything balances. So that's our entry, and we'd make a similar entry on, on the first of the ninth, or 2019 and 2020, the next couple of years. Each time we pay interest, we make a similar entry, though it won't have the same exact numbers because we're going to be amortizing a different amount of premium to, to have different interest expense, which we're about to calculate right now. So how do we get interest expense for the next year, for right here? Well, we take the new carrying value, right? Remember, it's been updated because we adjusted it for the amount of premium that we amortized last time. We take the new carrying value, we multiply that by the market rate, 7%, 0 0.07. So that's going to give us, let me see here, uh, 72531 dollars. Okay, that's our interest expense. The cash paid, well, that's just the same, 90,000. Matter of fact, uh, I could just go ahead and fill that in right now, 90,000. Let me scroll up so you don't get confused by the entry. 90,000 each each time, right? We're always paying out the same cash for interest, uh, but our interest expense is changing because the carrying value of the bonds is changing. So now, how do we get this premium amortized? Well, we do the same thing we did before. We just take the cash paid and subtract out the interest expense, uh, and that's going to give us 17,469. And then we take this amount, and we sub deduct it from the carrying value of the bonds, right? And that's going to give us 1,018,691. Then we multiply that by 0 0.07 again, by that market rate. And then that's going to give us the interest expense for the final year, for year three, which is 71,000. And you got to do a little rounding here to make it add up. 71,309. And then now. Premium amortization, again, we just take the difference between the cash paid and the interest expense, and it's going to be 18691 and we take this and deduct it from the carrying value of the bonds, the most recent one, with 1, 1018691 minus 18691 is going to give us $1 million, which, as you remember, is the face value of our bonds. So ultimately, we start with the carrying value of the bonds in the beginning is the bond proceeds, right? And that's issued at a premium, so it's actually more than what the face value is by 52486 But over time, we as we amortize this premium, we're actually adjusting and updating the carrying value of the bonds. 
and ultimately we get to a million dollars which is the face value and this at the same time as we're doing this premium as we're calculating this not only are we changing the carrying value of the bonds and ultimately getting it back to our face value but we're also computing our interest expense for each period to allow us to do the journal entries so ultimately the interest expense is what's going to go to the income statement not the cash paid